Welcome to vacuum cupping. Now, this is an absolutely fantastic modality to add to your toolbox. This is what we call vacuum cupping. There is fire cupping and there is also wet cupping. We will not be showing you any of those in this course. It is specifically to do with the vacuum cups. These sets obviously come in with a range of cups in different sizes, and they also come with what we call the vacuum gun itself. So this is the apparatus you use to increase and decrease the pressure. We have different size cups. Obviously, the reason for that is that we use them in different regions of the body. So if we're looking on working a smaller area, then we'll obviously we're gonna use the smaller cups, such as this size here. If we're looking at using, obviously, cups in and around the back or the neck and so forth, um, then we might probably use a cup that's a little bit larger like so. They have a little valve at the top that you can use um, and that can release the pressure if you want to take them off or you can simply just put your finger to the side and snap it off as well. There are other little added valves in there as well that you can use. Um, I tend to take these out myself because I find that they don't interfere with the skin when you're starting to glide. So what we will be doing when we're using these cups is we'll be applying it to the tissue um, by using obviously the gun itself, the apparatus, so you can see that the vacuum is created underneath in that space there. And then obviously we'll be using some lubrication and you use that lotion and that medium to work across the actual skin itself. Now what we're actually doing here when we're using the cups, it is obviously debatable at the moment, but I feel that what we're actually looking at working with is the interface between our epidermis and our superficial fascia. So when would you use these cups? Well. For me, I use these cups in areas where I find that fascially we get a lot of, lot of restrictions, okay? So obviously if we start looking about the lateral thigh, then obviously when we're talking about runner's knee and so forth, or even iliotibial band syndrome, you'll tend to find there'll be a lot of fascial tightness on the outside. So that's where the cups come into their own. If you've got people who obviously suffer from postural fatigue syndrome as well, then there'll be areas there where they're fascially quite tight as well so you can use the cups from them as well now the big question will be can we use these cups in and around and over trigger point sites absolutely I urge you to definitely use these over trigger point sites so we'll show you a little bit about how and generally how to use these but any of the trigger point sites that you've been shown already we can most definitely use them over so keep in mind that when we are using these cups it is imperative that we do not use them over open wounds or any sites of infections or god forbid any undiagnosed lumps as well they are the contraindications there may be your non-compliant diabetic clients so the vascularly might be challenged so you also want to see whether or not they might not be a great patient to use them on apart from that outside of those parameters you'll have no issues using them one of the things that will probably happen from time to time is that you will get some bruising. Now, trust me, that's not an issue and it certainly isn't permanent. So keep in mind, give it a couple of days and usually the bruising dissipates as well. Um, I think using these cups is gonna be a fantastic um, add to your treatment modality. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. I've been using cups for now, I think close to 20 years myself. Um, I don't necessarily use them in every treatment that I do, but I'll probably be using them three or four times a day. There's no doubt about it. So I hope you enjoy this course. It is, will be an absolute game changer for you. There's no doubt about it. If you're not cupping, then by all means, get yourself a cup, watch our course and get into it.